Welcome to our continuing coverage of VMworld 2020. Today, I have the pleasure of having Rick Kilcoyne and Grant Ho, who are the Chief Technology Officer and Chief Marketing Officer for CloudBolt Software. How are you doing today? Doing great. Doing great. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. Good to be here. Uh, as Brian said, you know, thank you guys uh, for both joining us today. And uh, I wanted to jump right into it and see if you guys could kick things off. Just give us a quick overview of the company. Great, yeah. Uh, so uh, CloudBolt uh, was uh, founded back in 2012, uh, really as, a, as an offshoot from uh, professional service projects around uh, extending uh, what used to be known as, as, as Opsware uh, server automation. Uh, which was eventually acquired by HP, and uh, taking that tool and uh, uh, giving it a more cloud-like interface. So at that time, you saw a big transition uh, and movement uh, and, and growth in initial growth in public cloud. Um, that tool, uh, Opsware, was was highly, um, uh, I would say, uh, IT centric, more of a back office tool. So it was more about taking that tool and turning it into a self-service cloud, like an AWS or something like that, where in my organization, I could come in there and it, come into that uh, 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 this this extension that we created, and and easily order those resources, whether it be physical servers or or in most often the case at that point, virtual servers. Uh, that that eventually grew um, and uh, uh, grew to extend uh, out to uh, public cloud as well. Uh, eventually, we dropped uh, uh, most support for uh, server automation uh, and and moved straight into. Uh, direct server provisioning and, and orchestration uh, in public cloud and on vCent, uh, VMware vCenter. So uh, over the uh, uh, last, uh, uh, I'd say, you know, it's been seven years, uh, we've seen a, a, a ton of growth in our client base. We've seen a lot of interesting trends come and go and, and, and come to stay. Um, you know, but we're, we're uh, highly focused on delivering uh, uh, hybrid cloud management and integration solutions to our customers and meeting them where they are on their journey uh, in, in moving to a hybrid cloud uh, infrastructure. Uh, we're backed by Insight Ventures, a $30 billion uh, private equity firm. Our headquarters is in Washington, D.C. We have six offices worldwide, uh, 150 plus customers, a, a, a great uh, world-class NPS. Uh, that's two and a half times the industry average. Um, you know, over 30,000 developers served and over, well over uh, 500,000 workloads managed. Uh, and that's, that's a brief overview of the company today. Great. Thanks for that overview. Um, today we're celebrating VMworld 2020. And unlike in past years, this year the event has gone digital uh, for obvious reasons. Um, what are your thoughts on these digital events versus the traditional physical events that we're used to? Yeah, Brian, I think uh, they're obviously very necessary right now. I think it's the, uh, you know, the best way to continue engaging with customers and partners, uh, whether it be Slacks or, or, or Zooms or GoToMeetings. Um, you know, I think we see a lot of positive in, in today's, you know, super hyper digital world. Um, but certainly in this case of, of, of COVID and the pandemic, I think, you know, these type of events they do lead to an important sense of greater empathy among your customers and partners, just the way you engage. Uh, I think a lot of the positives include also just being able to digest and take information kind of at your own time. So the ability to really get deep in subjects can actually be helped through some of these types of interactions. Um, but it also forces, you know, organizations, you know, ourselves and others to get really focused on our messaging, right? Get focused on what we want to offer simply because there's so much um, out there when it comes to these to these digital events. But, um, but I will say, you know, nothing does replace, you know, those, those physical events, something we're looking forward to, um, the face-to-face -face with customers, the face-to-face -face with partners, building those close personal relationships. So certainly looking forward to when that can come again and, and being, um, you know, a participant in, um, you know, the physical side in, in addition to the digital side. And, you know, we're, we're all, I think, missing the, you know, physical trade shows uh, but one of the other massive shifts that have taken place is this whole notion of working from home. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on that? And, you know, how has it changed things at your own company? Right. Um, David, I, I think, you know, we've, uh, we've adjusted really well. Um, you know, as I shared, you know, we probably do with a, what a lot of companies do, the Slacks, the Zooms, the go to meetings. Um, 
you know, what's interesting about us, and just to build what, what Rick said, you know, we're a, a very geographically dispersed organization, um, you know, and even more so with our uh, recon acquisition of Sob Labs back in June of 2020, and then also our announcement to acquire uh, Cumulus, which is a Melbourne-based, Australian-based company of cost optimization and governance solutions. So being a very geographically dis uh, dispersed companies, you know, headquarters in DC, offices in Boston, offices in Portland, and you know, field teams around the country and around the world has always, uh, you know, forced us to, uh, to, to embrace that, that, that diversity and certainly to embrace, you know, how to communicate across different time zones and across different cities. So it's, um, you know, it, it's, it's been really great for us and, um, you know, we, we continue to do it and, uh, you know, certainly we'll continue to do that more, um, you know, you know, throughout the uh, coming quarters and years. Okay. And maybe you guys can tell us since we're here talking about VMworld, um, how do you guys partner with VMware? Yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, uh, VMware has always had a special place in our hearts, uh, going all the way back uh, to to uh, um, the emergence of virtualization. I, I remember uh, the first time seeing it, just being like, "What magic am I am I watching here?" It was just amazing. Uh, and then extending it uh, forward through uh, our days at Opsware, which uh, where where VMware and virtualization just just completely uh, reworked. Uh, uh, server management in the data center, and then into, into where we are today, which you know we we see uh, uh, all of our customers still have a a, a significant uh, vCenter VMware virtualization environment in their private data centers. Okay, and we don't think those are going away anytime soon. They're going to be around for a while and and continue to grow. Um, and uh, you know, so we've always had a tight relationship with that product. Uh, uh, it's 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 uh, you know um, uh, both on the uh, uh, from from a cloud perspective, and our, our the company we recently acquired with Solve Labs, so our, our our Solve customers have some of the highest NPS ratings in the industry today. Uh, they they uh, using uh, uh, their implementations of, of VRA. So we have a tight relationship with VMware there. Uh, we've done some great things in, in implementing VRA for those large customers, and 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 intend to do so going forward, uh, taking it to the next level with our our OneFuse platform that we're. Uh, we recently released and, and have uh, uh, several releases on the roadmap coming up uh, this fall. And, uh, you know, thanks for that. And yeah, I've, I've, we were closely watching both the acquisitions that you guys uh, made. I think they were both, uh, you know, real good pickups for your company uh, and for the, you know, the industry. Um, can we get maybe a little bit of a rundown, kind of dive deeper into your technology offerings, what, what you guys, you know, do, the technology and then more importantly, maybe talk about how it's unique or differentiated in the marketplace. Sure thing. So, um, so I can, you know, just to build on, on Rick and I know he'll show some, uh, some, some screens and demos in a second. So uh, again, you know, with our, our acquisitions of Solve Labs and Cumulus, we fundamentally have three core product offerings in our portfolio. Uh, the first one is our cloud bowl cloud management platform offering, right? So it's an award-winning cloud management platform and really focus on doing, you know, you know, one thing really well, helping IT deliver their hybrid cloud resources, right? Your storage, your compute, very complex multi-tier application stacks out to developers in a very cost-effective, efficient, and secure way. And, um, you know, when you think about, um, you know, organizations, you know, who are following your, your channel, following your blog with vSphere, with, with v, you know, VSX, you know, instead of, you know, then needing to contact their, um, their IT through, you know, help desk tickets or ServiceNow tickets, they can use the power of something like a cloud management platform to get those virtual machines um, quickly and easily. So that's really the cloud full power. And, uh, you know, what makes CloudBolt very different from other CMPs is really time to value. Um, we're a, a cloud management platform that's easy to deploy, you know, easy to use, easy to extend. And, you know, what we always like to say is that if you want to be able to um, stand up cloud bolts and get your virtual machines, you know, automatically delivered to you very, very quickly, you can do that, you know, from, you know, from, from breakfast out to lunch, right? So really, really quickly, that time to value that speed. So that's one. The second one is, as Rick alluded to, was our, our recon acquisition of Sov Labs. And they have a very powerful platform called OneFuse, um, which is really a codeless integration platform. And really what that does is really reduce the high cost and complexity of custom coding integrations across your IT infrastructure, your IPAMs, your DNS, your Active Directory, your networking and backup with your automation platforms. Uh, that could be VMware vRealize, that could be Terraform, that could be other tools. 
And what's really great there, especially for VMware customers, is that you know if you otherwise would have to custom write integrations between VRA, VRA, you know VMware vRealize Automation, to your custom tools, you can now do that codelessly through OneFuse. And that becomes really important for the massive migration from VRA7 over to VRA8. And even more importantly, as those VMware vRealize customers adopt additional tools like Terraform and like Kubernetes. So we're really trying to solve that custom coding problem. And um, that's really a core differentiator with the OneFuse platform. It does it in a codeless way. The industry's first platform to codelessly create integrations across your infrastructure and automation tools. So that's two. Then number three, um, you know, very recently we announced, um, you know, we'll be acquiring Cumulus, um, a leader, a SaaS-based leader based out of Australia uh, that offers a very powerful capabilities of public cloud, specifically for Azure and AWS in cost optimization, security, and compliance. So certainly for, for VMware customers or other customers who are going in that direction, right, very much in the public cloud space, if they want to right size, if they want to, you know, power down unused services, if they want to, you know, figure out where their idle resources are, they can use this, this very powerful Cumulus capabilities to do that. And what's really great about the Cumulus acquisition really ties back to what Rick said too, right? It's really kind of our simplicity and our core time to value. That particular technology allows organizations to identify where they can optimize their costs, where they can be more secure very, very quickly to the stakeholders that matter most. So those elements of time to value, those elements of simplicity through codeless integrations, uh, I'd say those are, are probably you know, pretty core defining characteristics of, uh, of our portfolio today. Rick, anything else to add to that? No, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, there's, there's really, uh, we kind of view the world through the lens of, of really eight critical cloud management capabilities, okay? Uh, and, and we feel that we've uh, uh, covered all eight of those uh, better than anybody else in the market, and uh, we'll continue to do so as the market expands. Right. And, you know, beyond uh, the acquisitions and some of the new things you've talked about, is there any other product announcements or updates that you guys have uh, regarding uh, new features or bug fixes, things like that? Uh, the, the, the ones that come to mind immediately is, is OneFuse 1 1.1, which will be releasing uh, towards the end of October. It's a big release for us. We were adding uh, uh, several modules uh, as we uh, extend the capabilities that we, we uh, uh, had for VRA 7. And, and we see v, VRA, I'm sorry, we see OneFuse 1 1.1 as being that bridge that helps, us custom, helps our customers migrate from VRA 7 to VRA 8 in a nice, clean, codeless way, uh, the same way they re, they've been able to leverage uh, um, uh, their upgrades or, or migrate between upgrades and, and VRA 7. And Rick, is there any way you can, you know, show us anything, either, you know, a quick demo or some screenshots so we know what the product looks like? Absolutely. Would love to. Great. Thanks, Brian. So, yeah, I do want to show a couple things. Um, we don't have a ton of time here, but I do want to demonstrate uh, uh, some quick uh, uh, key value points uh, for CloudBolt. Um, you know, uh, Cloudbolt CMP, as we we call it now internally, uh, it's our it's our uh, approach to CMP, which which takes a highly abstracted approach and extensible approach to uh, cloud management platforms. Um, so our goal here is is to to provide as uh, uh, many features as possible or as easy access as possible to you know the vast majority of an enterprise's users. Okay, uh, you're always going to have your power users at the edges and the fringes, but we want to capture that large population that just wants to come in and get in an outcome. Okay, and that outcome is usually something like, I need a database server, I need a, a VM, I need to uh, order an Office 365 account. I need to just, just to, to, to get this thing done, uh, get in, get out, and be notified when it's ready to go. And uh, as part of that, uh, 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 what I want to demonstrate is, is a, a blueprint that we have. Uh, uh, this, this particular blueprint uh, creates a Jenkins server, okay? The server itself, the application is almost immaterial. It could be an internal application. It could be a Jenkins server. It could be uh, really whatever whatever your imagination can conjure. But um, the idea here is that as a user, I'm going to come in here and be able to order this across uh, a public cloud environment or a private cloud environment and do so in a way where I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me where that environment is. 
uh, I would be presented with the with the uh, 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 the questions that matter to me uh, to get the resource I need. So coming into the catalog here, uh, I've selected uh, our Jenkins blueprint. I'm going to click order. I'm going to select which group I want to order it for. I'm an admin, so I see all the groups, but typically um, I'd only see the groups that I'm a member of. Uh, let's order this one for product engineering. And once I've selected that group, it's now building out this uh, order form environment for me. So I can then choose from any uh, 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 defined Cloud Bolt environments that uh, uh, this blueprint is available to order from. And right now we see that we get a cost preview of three environments here, uh, engineering short term, uh, private cloud, and East Coast QA cloud. Those are environments into which I'm allowed to provision this blueprint. And this blueprint is certified to be deployed into. Okay, so you're already sort of seeing that sort of implicit governance happening here before I've even ordered the resource. I'm presented with, here are the environments I'm allowed to deploy this, this blueprint in. Uh, so I'll can select uh, from those. So let's, we could select East Coast, East Coast QA Cloud. We could select uh, Engineering Short Term. We could select Private Cloud, okay? Those names are just handles for the users, okay? And a lot of times they don't tip the hat as far as where this is even being deployed. You know, East Coast QA Cloud, I, I, that could be in vCenter. It could be in uh, 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 um, AWS, okay? From the user's perspective, typically they don't care. But me as the curator of, this, curator of this environment, I care. I care where these things go. So not only do I care, I can also control all the parameters that deliver this into those environments. For instance, if I go to private cloud, um, you know, it's, it's not asking me any questions. It's saying, okay, private cloud, go. Okay, build my, build my server for me. And that's a key aspect of Cloud Bolt, that abstraction, that, that, that easy button of being able to say, hey, here's where you go, and we're going to take care of, don't worry about the location, don't worry about the details, we'll take care of that for you. Um, you know, uh, even going so far as, let's look at engineering short term. Now, in that particular environment, we've exposed a couple parameters and let the user choose number of CPUs, maybe uh, 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 memory uh, uh, configuration. So it's it's it, so you have that ability to provide different levels of services even to different levels of users out there. Um, you may have some very very advanced users that know exactly how they want to order these things. You may have some very uh, uh, um, I don't want to say less advanced or less advanced users who don't know what these things mean. They don't know what a data store is. They don't know what a VPC is. They don't know what a what a, a network segment is. You want to answer those questions for them and get them to their outcome as fast as possible. And that's where Cloud Bolt uh, CMP really shines in getting users to those outcomes quickly. Um, you know, we have a, 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 a nice online uh, catalog where I can Im import blueprints to get my environment up and running. Uh, those include public cloud blueprints, private cloud blueprints, and everything else. So uh, everything in between. Um, so uh, we talk about abstraction. From an extensibility standpoint, Cloud Bolt is infinitely extendable. Uh, both by ourselves and by our customers. We have a lot of customers that have added a ton of value to their CMP environment just by uh, creating new uh, uh, UI integrations. And, and, and the, probably the closest thing out there, I, I could say as an analogy, is almost like, a, like, a, like, a, like a, a, a Drupal or a WordPress where I'm adding plugins to extend and build my own cloud environment. That's really what Cloud Bolt uh, uh, CMP delivers uh, from a core differentiator standpoint. So putting that aside, let's, let's talk about Cumulus for a bit, okay? Cumulus is a recent acquisition. Uh, we're working feverishly to start uh, integrating this with our product. Um, this is a SaaS-based product. Um, it is a product that I personally fell in love with during the due diligence process. They, they you know, our, our team handed it to me and said, hey, go try this out. I plugged in my AWS account and I was immediately able to see my, my spends, see what I'm spending on, go check out my service advisor to say, hey, here's, here's, uh, here's things you're paying for. Um, here's your potential savings. And, and uh, oh, look, look at all these volume snapshots that are sitting out there unused. You know, go, go delete those and save yourself some money. Everybody forgets about that stuff. Like it's not, it's not just about what you see. There's a lot of stuff that you don't see in these clouds that gets left over um, and you need to go delete them. So for instance, Let's say I have a bunch of developers that are that are running uh, um, some scripts uh, and and to spin up AWS instances. Okay, well, uh, uh, there's a, a a setting within AWS that says, hey, when I delete the instance, don't delete the volume. Yeah. Me as a developer, I don't know if that's set up or not. I don't know, so I just start deleting my instances, and and who knows whether that volume will be uh, um, 
uh, delete it or not. A tool like Cumulus gives you visibility into those types of resources. Uh, a tool like Cumulus also gives you a visibility into security and compliance. Okay, so being able to go out and scan those, continuously scan resources out in AWS, out in Azure, out in the public cloud to see what your security posture is. And, you know, out of the box support with uh, uh, PCI DSS and, and uh, AWS well architected. Uh, we've already uh, uh, started putting those compliance frameworks in there and then building additional compliance frameworks. So a lot of great work uh, going on with this product. And, and this is this is a SaaS based product available today. Um, one fuse. One fuse we're super excited about. Uh, one fuse, as we see, is, is sort of the, this 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 uh, idea of, of a, of a uh, cloud hybrid cloud integration bus. Uh, if I log into to one fuse here, this is one fuse 1.0. Uh, let me get the right password. I'm logging in. I'm going. I'm logging in with the intent of logging in and uh, uh, automating responsibly here. But let's log in. And I'm taken to the, the console here. We see a lot of coming soon. This product is in active development right now. And like I said, a lot of these go green uh, as, as we approach 1.1 uh, uh, in October. But uh, to, to, for this demonstration, I'm just gonna talk about naming, okay, our naming modules. You know, a, 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 something, uh, people, people often don't realize how complex naming things can be in an in enterprise, across an enterprise. Okay, and now it's even more complex because now you have public cloud, you have private cloud, and you have a multitude of, of uh, developer productivity tools out there that are also creating objects and need names. Okay, and that's where uh, that's that's a that's a great uh, demonstration of where OneFuse provides a ton of value, being able to create a naming policy, being able to create and manage naming sequences. Um, uh, which, you know, based on numbers, octals, whatever you want to use, you know, uh, uh, parameters, input parameters, being able to create all these things and manage these names in a single place across all the tools. So if I'm a Terraform user out there and I'm provisioning to the public cloud, that Terraform, uh, uh, the, the OneFuse Terraform plugin can call into this system and say, hey, give me a, give me a host name. And everybody knows about it. Everybody's, everybody's informed. Um, if I'm uh, 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 just writing a, a straight REST API or, or, or to something, or, or, or just a Boto3 call, let's say I'm writing a Python script using Boto3 to AWS, or, or PyVIOMI to, to uh, script a uh, vCenter environment, I can reach out to, again, uh, OneFuse via a simple call, API call, and say, hey, give me a host name. OneFuse provides that host name. OneFuse now has visibility in that host name. Okay. And, and or, I said host name. Yeah, host name. Um, and then take that and extend it to all those other contended resources across IT, your IP addresses, your backup as a service policies, all these things out there that live out there and that govern that environment, you can now make available through uh, uh, the OneFuse platform across multiple tools, across ServiceNow, Terraform, Ansible, CloudBolt, you know, other CMPs like VRA, VRA7, uh, 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 Morpheus Data, all these CMPs in the market, all able to access a single common integration platform platform to coordinate these resources. And that's my demo for the time being. Awesome. If I can just maybe just one last point to, 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 uh, to build on, on Rick's point there, you know, as he showed kind of, you know, the cloud CMP, you know, really easy to use, then graduating to Cumulus, which is adding these costs and security capabilities in a continuous fashion. And then really going up to the ranks of OneFuse, which is also really elevating that cloud management story to really one of governance, right? Because as you go more into cloud management, it is using all these multiple tools in the organization, right? The DevOps tools, the IT and infrastructure tools, the VRAs, the cloud bolts, the Terraforms, there will be that need to deeply be able to govern a lot of those tools uh, through standards and through policies. So we really think that that kind of vision right there is where the industry is heading when it comes to hybrid cloud management and obviously very excited for the, uh, the portfolio to come together to meet that, uh, to meet that vision. Well, I want to thank you guys for uh, giving us an in-depth look into uh, your technology as well as the acquisitions and how they fit together. Um, where can people go if they want to find out more information about CloudBolt and some of the technologies you talked about today? Yeah, you can just come to our website, www.cloudbolt.io. Great. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for you having too. me. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more of these VMblog videos, please hit the like button and subscribe.
and it's important if you want to get notified the next time we post a video, please hit the subscribe and the bell notification.